please. Hey bosses, welcome to our podcast. I'm Megan, I'm here with Melinda and Jill. Uh, ladies, how are we today? Pretty good. I think we're pretty good. Yeah. I, I you? would have to agree. Um, you're both stunning. I'm happy. Let's just do this. Okay. That <laughs> did you have no coffee sense, this morning? I, you know, I, I'm feeling super energetic this morning and I did have coffee which I always do, but this particular coffee was from a new place, and maybe it was like just extra caffeinated or something. I don't know, but it was or it had speed in it. We yeah, know. <laughs> I'm or like over here other. just like shaking. <laughs> um, okay, well, speaking of that, how are we a boss this week, and how are we a caffeinated boss this week? Um, I will go first. Okay, okay. go, Melinda. So, um, I own a music agency with my husband called JMB Entertainment, and we do a lot of advertising. So you have to like, you know call different companies like the not wedding wire blah 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 blah, and buy like ad space or whatever so i had this one company reach out to me and i they seemed legit right lo and behold they're not so we paid this certain amount of money and long story short i ended up cursing out that entire company and got my refund back so that's how i was a boss yeah no, it is such a people bo- scam yes, you. Totally, people scam you, and it's and I went off. I was like, how can you live your life like this? Like, you need to stop scamming people. Like, how do you go to sleep at night? Like, I was just so and you're mad. a small business owner. You. Small business owner. Yeah. And this is what they do. Ridiculous. That so, is, but good for you for getting your money back because that could have went south so quickly. It, I feel like at this point, though, they paid me to go away because I wasn't going to let no, up. No, but that's what you sure. have to do. Because so many people do let up and they're just like, oh, it's a loss. Absolutely. I'm like, no, this is a loss. That's how they well, get their know, money. Exactly. But good for you. That yeah. That is boss. Yeah. That is boss. Jill, how about you? Um, I did something that I guess I normally wouldn't have done. I have this really bad habit of not keeping in touch with people. And I rarely, like, reach back out to them. And I actually bossed up and I reached out to a friend that I hadn't talked to in years. Mm. Wow. Um, And we ended up having an amazing conversation. And hopefully um, he's going to come and hang out once he gets to L.A. It's very exciting. But, you know, just you have, like, gut feelings that, you you know, you need to talk to somebody. And you feel like there's something missing. And... Yeah, it ended up just working out and we had a great conversation, but it's not something I would normally do just because, I don't know, you get lazy and you feel like... When you have your circle. Your right. circle I mean, you guys are so good at keeping in touch. Like, really, you are so good at keeping <laughs> in touch. And it's always something that I've kind of had to work on, especially people that I've sort of lost connect with in college or anything like that. So I bossed up. And I reached out, and it actually ended up working in my favor, which I knew it would in the yeah. long run. But it's just like taking that step and sort of doing it. Anyone can relate so, yeah. to that. So I did really it. Cool. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, Megan? Uh, this week, so you know I'm a woman of many side hustles. <laughs> yes, yes, And so are. one of my side hustles is nannying. And uh, so it, it just so happens that there is um, – there's two of them, but, you know, this family is great. They, they are able to have a lot of help. So there's myself and this other woman. So the, the other woman watches the little baby, and I watch the, the four-year-old. And they were in the tub, and I had to go get the towels – uh, Lucy was watching them and I all of a sudden I could hear nah, no it's my toy it's my toy and they were and I'm very sweet I don't I don't need to yell at these kids at all but I, I walk into the bathroom I went I had total instinctive mom voice hey if you don't knock it off you're gonna get go into timeout as soon as this bath is over <laughs> and the both of them are just like I love yes, it. Megan. Like, but I never yell. Yeah. But you know, it made me nervous because they were in the tub, and that's right. dangerous. Like, there's <laughs> right. water involved. Right. Like, you want whatever. But I was so impressed with my motherly, instinctive skills, and I was like, you know what? I one day I will be a cool mom, but I'm also gonna be like authoritative, and they're gonna have my respect. Absolutely. And I was like, you know what? That was Absolutely. a boss moment on my part. Yeah. So I was pretty impressed with myself. I love that. Um. <laughs> Well, that brings us to our next topic, which is dealing with difficult people. <laughs> when Whether people's children sometimes those are whatever. children. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah, exactly. so I, I've had many experiences in my boss life, my moments as a manager, where I've had to deal with very difficult people in the workplace. How do we combat that? What are the tools that you guys use to sort of either work with those people or continue in doing your own thing? Do you want to hear my tool? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have a very specific tool. So again, another one of my side hustles is I work for Victoria's Secret. Or, yeah, I can say that. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I, was like, I was like, wait, should I just close the company? No, it's fine. It's so fine. I work for Victoria's Secret and <laughs> I, it's my first job in sales and I will not lie. I am not good at, um, 
I'm good at selling, but when it comes to like the folding panties and being meticulous about how they're folded and Victoria's Secret's a great company where they're very organized, but I just cannot get it. So I was messing up one night and one of the managers opened one of the drawers that I happened to be working on and I knew instantly she was going to yell at me. And, and this particular woman is, is a boss, but she's, you know, she, she's hard. She's hard on you. And the way I deal with difficulty when I when I am trying my best is I deflect it with humor. I made this woman love me so much. I, I know she wanted to hate me. I know she wanted to be like, Megan, you are so annoying. But I just, you know, I made a joke. She looked, at, she opened the panty drawer. She was like, who did this drawer? And I was like, girl, don't get your panties in a wad. Like, let me just be, I just like cry. <laughs> Oh my, oh my God, God. Megan. I just crack jokes and you know, she, she's like half annoyed and half loves me yeah. and I'm, I'm slowly warming up to her, but I just use humor because granted you have to be serious about your job. At the same time, you have to just be light about life sometimes and know that it is just underwear. Nine to five. Yeah. It's just underwear. It's literally just underwear. Just relax, you know? So I that's, think it's that's a good way to deal with people. I mm. do because they realize I'm, they're being like too intense mm-hmm. or they're being too serious about something. Mm-hmm. I love that. I absolutely love that. How do you guys oh, deal with it? <laughs> well, I probably don't deal with them the best way. <laughs> the, fir- the first step is admitting. Go I'm, on. I'm, well, that's I'm, great. I'm really going to be honest about that. And it's really as of late, I just cut them out of my life. <laughs> Actually, I can I can vouch for that. She really does. Um, I just don't have time for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't. I want to be surrounded by positive, uplifting, inspirational people that don't bring their BS into my life. And, you know, my mom always jokes that she puts people on a point system. And when they run out of points, like, it's done. <laughs> and I, you know, the older I get, I, I understand that. But my husband's always like, you just stopped talking to that person. I'm like, yeah, I did. Are you? You're a certified ghoster, Melinda. I, I thought am. only men could well, be ghosters. Well, but here's but... the thing: it's not even just that. Like, I stop. I tell them I'm stopping. There you go. There <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I literally have said to somebody, "I'm unsubscribing," and 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 I unsubscribed. Yeah. So you know, I give people chances, probably way too long. You know, too many chances and for too long. But um, when I reach my point, I reach my point. I Whether think, that's in work or personal, I just I support I that. move on because my well being is important. I definitely Good to support know. that. Yeah. Good yeah. to know. So. Hopefully that doesn't yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's looking at us with beady eyes like yeah. you're next. No, no, no. So no, your no. job is stressful and you're a manager. So yeah. how do you deal with it? So I was thrown into a management position with no experience and it was scary as all hell. Uh, but Fortunately for me, I work for a company that was willing to sort of nurture my um, inability to manage. And really, for me, learning how to work with difficult people took me working with some people that I didn't get along with. Because in life, you're obviously not going to get along with everybody. But there are certain tools that you can keep in your toolbox that help you move past an issue, work with an issue. Um, my company was amazing and they've sent me to various uh, team building management courses, things like that, just to, you know, better me as a person and also yeah. better me as an employee who works for them. And I found some amazing things like, you know, for the longest time I had disagreed with this one person and I couldn't figure out why. And I thought it was personal. Hmm. Maybe it's just me. You know, maybe they just don't like me as a person. I try not to bring too much of my personal life into the job, but Maybe that's it. They just can't warm up to me. But really, it's because they learn in a different way than I learn. Mm. And I didn't, you know how they talk about love languages? Mm -hmm. There are learning languages. So people sort of take information differently than other people. So it's just really amazing when you finally figure out what their language is because then you can have a clear path to communication. And I have to say, it has been so successful. I've been a manager for around three years and it's almost like autopilot at this point, but it's just those things that I keep with me that that's that's how I deal with it and never take anything personally because nine times out of ten, it's something that's going on in their day, not yours. True. That's good advice. That's really good advice. Yeah. Mm. Are we wrapping up? Now? I think we're going to wrap up now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited for our guests. Yes. So I really want to get Me there. Me too. Yes. So we have artist relations supervisor Valerie Peterson from the Emmy award winning show The Voice on <laughs> next. And she has some fun stories for us. So stay tuned. 
Welcome back, bosses. So we are so thrilled to have Valerie Peterson in studio with us today. Val is the artist relations supervisor for NBC's The Voice. Val's been overseeing the artists on the NBC show since its debut. And professionally and personally, she seeks to inspire and encourage others to live their truth without feeling the pressures of perfection. That's right. I love that. <laughs> I love that too. That's Welcome. Right. Welcome. Yeah. Thank so you happy to here. have you. Thank you for having me. So for those who don't know what you do, mm-hmm. kind of explain your day to day. I hate to say this, but I think that the easiest way to explain it is like I'm a mother to 48 individual artists. Mm-hmm. Those 48 are the people who make the teams. When we're in the blind rounds process, we actually have upwards of 100. So it's it's a lot of helping people to stay on track, helping them to answer emails, answer phone calls, be professionals, say please and thank you, wash their hands, like literally <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so keep good. themselves healthy. It's 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 like day-to-day management for at this point like thousands of people, wow. which is wow. so yeah. crazy. But I couldn't imagine like a more perfect person to oh, have this job. You're you. so like comforting and Thanks. nurturing and I'm like, oh my God, like I want to try out for The Voice just so <laughs> you can like be my mama. And mind you, I cannot sing. Melinda, on the other hand, that's, she can sing. Oh my gosh. I know yeah. somebody. Yeah. Mom. <laughs> right, right. We'll talk about Connection. my voice experience a little Connection. later. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But you do it. have a very maternal aura about She does, you. yes. So she does. It seems like a perfect job. Totally, totally. Mm-hmm. When you went to school, uh, did you ever imagine that you would end up doing what you're doing now? No, totally not. Um, I went to school actually for psychology. Um, I wanted to be, initially I wanted to be a marriage and therapy, marriage therapy uh, therapist. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, that was what I was most interested in. Uh, I actually ended up leaving school early, about a year early from graduating because I just wasn't happy mm-hmm. and I needed a major change. And I felt like I had been living for so many other people, namely my family, for so long that it was just like, you know what, I can't take it anymore. And I left literally like a week later and I moved to Los Angeles almost 11 years ago, which is crazy. Wow. But never considered television ever as an opportunity, um, more or less a career at this point. Like it's been totally insane well how did it happen I think honestly by chance Mm. I I hate to say this I'm actually talking with my therapist about it (laughs) (laughs) I always always feel like I'm one of those people who happens who just happens to be like in the right place at the right time and one of my regulars at a restaurant I had been working at was just like why don't you just get out of the restaurant industry like come work on the show you'd be great um It's a super boring job, but I feel like I've always been one of those people that wants to say yes instead of being scared, Mm -hmm. which is why I'm here Mm -hmm. right now. (laughs) (laughs) But but, um, I said yes, and it ended up just really spinning into this crazy journey. I've worked in casting um, on shows like Top Chef, which is another Emmy Mm -hmm. award-winning show. So much fun. Absolutely incredible. Um, Project Runway. Uh, God, what else? Another show on Bravo actually about artists. Um, The Next Great American Artist, which was really cool. But I just feel like I've been so, so lucky to have been able to work with so many incredibly talented people on these platforms Mm -hmm. that just focus on talent instead of drama or, you know, not that I don't enjoy those things as well, but (laughs) it's it's been really cool. So You definitely have to give yourself credit though too because to just all of a sudden you almost you're almost done school and then you're like (laughs) wait a second I'm not happy why not move to LA what made you think LA I'm just gonna move to Los Angeles and just kind of see what happens I think that it was honestly just the next big city over like it was Mm -hmm. far enough away I could have my own life close enough I could go home you grew up in Vegas yeah I grew up in Vegas I feel normal (laughs) <laughs> you're very normal I, I think I'm normal it's very yeah. rare you don't hear many people from Vegas <laughs> but yeah I grew up there um it was great but I just I needed a change and I think that I just needed to get away um just start on my own so it was pretty cool 
I think though it's because you have such a positive vibe and aura that people want to be around you and I think Mm -hmm. you say it's luck but I really do think it's like who you are that has brought you all these opportunities um yeah so I guess like what um what else would you say to like people that kind of are afraid to like take the leap just fucking do it Yes. I don't know if I can swear. No, you can. You can. <laughs> we say to the every guest. Yeah, like, yeah, swear, yeah, right. swear. Like, just do it. It's it's so crazy because I feel like everything is right on the other side of fear. You mm-hmm. know, it's like this thing that we create for ourselves. It's not even, you know, an an actual obstacle. We totally bring it into our own lives and we say, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. You know, um, I see that a lot in my day to day with the artists on the show. Um, it's terrifying. You know, yeah. they're standing up on stage on a national television show in front of four of the biggest artists in our country. Mm-hmm. I mean, Gwen Stefani's worldwide. Blake Shelton, maybe not so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it's you've got to really kind of get past that for yourself and just go for it. Like, what the fuck do you have to lose? Like, mm-hmm. Totally. I uh, know. So Great. you're right. essentially like a professional ledge talker like you talk people yeah. off of. so maybe if, if you can without maybe naming names share like one of the craziest things that you've ever had to say to somebody to sort of talk them down from from making a mistake or oh, you know yeah. doing something they should have been doing I feel like there are probably too many times to remember that, honestly <laughs> like it's it's crazy to think about but I think that it usually happens before performances it's more um more in like the song selection during live shows yeah. where they know that there's so much on the line at that point. Usually one person goes home every single week or two people. And by that point, most of the artists are like, I, could, I didn't even think that I would ever get to the live shows, but I, here I am and now I don't want to go home and I don't want to fuck this up. And I'm like, then then don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then don't. Just like do your thing and be you and be honest and be truthful to who you are and yeah. just – fucking do it are you the person that they you're the, their go-to person like they're freaking it's, out backstage it's usually myself or our vocal coach Trey okay Lani, who's okay equally like I go to Trey Lonnie when I'm like I just need somebody to talk to <laughs> <laughs> like I'm freaking out now yeah because you need a person yeah, yeah, yeah need absolutely person. or wine yeah yes <laughs> speaking of we're yes. sipping on that with well, so, Chardonnay right now so we were talking earlier about how we deal with difficult people Mm -hmm. in situations. So I'm sure in that line of work, you deal with a lot of egos and a lot of (laughs) difficult people. So how do you personally deal with that? Uh, I feel like I don't take it personally. Everyone, I feel like my motto from the time I can remember, honestly, is just that we all have a story. We all come from somewhere and are shaped into the people we are now based on our experiences. And so I think it's a lot of patience, Mm. not to say I don't get pissed off and hurt and cry at the end of the day I mean we've definitely had artists who've unfortunately I just don't think realize the impact of that negative of an attitude Mm -hmm. can have um it's a really small industry you know we're music we are a lot of our producers and our stage crew work on award shows yeah um music videos we have choreographers there um it's it's a very small world. It's like a melting pot of everything just kind of crashing together. But I don't know. To go back to that, I I try to not take it personally. If it's a really bad day, again, wine. Um, <laughs> I, I try it's to just secure. Yeah. really like take care of myself. Um, you know, if I have a day off, go to the spa. Yeah. I'll, I'll treat myself to a facial or sometimes just like essential oils and early bedtime. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Self care is yeah. 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 Very it's huge. It's huge. How do you set boundaries when these artists have your personal number and mm-hmm. they can reach out to you whenever? Because I feel like for bosses, it's very hard for us to take time for ourselves and to mm-hmm. turn it off. So how available are you and how do you set boundaries with them? It's it's been a slow burn. Um, I think in the earlier seasons, I didn't have many boundaries. Mm-hmm. I was so emotionally invested in every single artist and I want to say around gosh probably around season seven or eight 
love you guys if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that I really started to notice that I was totally cracking. I was mm. on edge. There wasn't enough space between myself and all of the stress that does happen at the show. And that also happens in their personal lives. You know, they're taken away from their families and then it's kind of on us, me mm-hmm. <laughs> specifically, <laughs> to talk them through, you know, it's like being an onset therapist in a lot of ways. Mm. Yeah. But talk them through like fights with their boyfriend or fights with their girlfriend or, you know, so you are a psychologist. Yeah. Yeah. That really degree are. actually yeah, did come yeah, in handy. Yeah, it comes in handy. Um, but it was, it's, it's just been really interesting. I've had to just kind of set hours for myself. Um, I know that my team has personally hated it because shit happens all the time. And sometimes I'll get a call at 1030. I'll screen the voicemail. And You're if like, it's going to wait till tomorrow, <laughs> then it's going to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> but um, I got a production phone. So it's no longer my personal cell. That's awesome. Good. Um, I don't know. And I think that I've just kind of instilled some tough love a little bit more. Like, you're a fucking adult. I think you have to. Yeah, yeah. like, do your own shit. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that's yeah. also such a boss move on your part because <laughs> already, like, you're you're so lovely and sweet. But yeah. it, there comes a point where you're like, um, but no. I need to be sane, too. Yeah. yeah. And you are an adult, <laughs> yeah. you know. And mm-hmm. you can take care of yourself. Yeah. So that, way to go. Thank you. Yeah, good on you to be like, <laughs> yeah. I need my own time. And you can deal with this yourself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I love yeah. that. So Jill was saying you have some some stories that I am eager to hear. Jill knows yes, them. Yes. Melinda's point you here too. <laughs> so there's some perks with your with your, your job. And Jill, like, intro these what well, you know okay, so, so far. So I've known I've known Valerie for almost five years, which is like so crazy. Yeah. Our our boyfriends are best friends. That's how we know each other. And then we became very good friends because of it. Just very serendipitous. It's like wonderful. Um so the cool part about Val's job is sometimes when they announce the winners, she gets to travel with them. And you get mm-hmm. some I mean, it's definitely like it sounds heinous the amount of things that you guys I mean it is <laughs> the amount of things that you have to do in the time period that you travel to New York City yeah. so maybe just like your favorite story from a winner and an experience that you had following the, the crown of the winner um well it would have to have been season five when I was Tessan Chin she was absolutely incredible um really truly one of the loveliest women ever on that show um especially winners not that like all of our winners are awesome Mm -hmm. and I feel like America can always tell like who the legit people are yeah Yeah. because we've never had an asshole Mm -hmm. ever that's really comforting to know as well because you always want to know that as a viewer you're like is this person really authentic yeah that's great thank you for confirming they're always amazing um but to San it was the most uncomfortable red eye to New York City that I've ever had in my entire life. The flight, it was in December, so it was holiday travel season. Everyone's oh, like yeah. scrambling to get home. I feel like that was the flight that I discovered I was claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> and I I broke out in hives on this flight. Oh and I'm goodness. thinking like I've got to be awake all day <laughs> for like in two hours and I haven't slept a fucking wink and the one time (laughs) that I did try to fall asleep the kid next to me I woke up and he was like trying to crawl over me and I was like motherfucker listen like me wake me me up up. right don't ever let me find you like this again like I it was horrible but I um did not sleep at all that night Got off the plane to San, smiling as usual. And she's like, oh, my God, we're going to have such a great day. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Let's get you into hair and makeup. Don't let anyone look at me. But we're kind of going through this whole day. And we get to go to, like, the Today Show and Sirius, XM, uh-huh. FM, whatever yeah. satellite they are. Um We're cruising through the day. I'm literally dying. I felt like I was going to cry because I was so tired. And she finally turns around in the car and she's like, Val, I have to to tell you something. I have a huge favor to ask. And I was like, my brain is going to fucking explode. Like, what? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I might die. She's like, well, I got tickets for us to go to Beyonce tonight. And I was like, wait, what? (laughs) Beyonce was in town. And it was that huge tour that she and Jay-Z had been Mm -hmm. doing like a few years ago at this point. She's like, I met the the CFO of the Barclays Center. Barclays Center. The Barclays Center, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> but um, she's like, do you want to go tonight? Seventh row. And I was like crying. I burst into tears. <laughs> oh, my God. Because I was like, amazing. I don't know if I'm like happy or sad or like, again, I don't know if I'm dying. Or yeah. I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> but we went and it was the best. Like, holy shit. That was an incredible show. I love I'm how she so... worded it as a favor. You're like, like you're doing me a favor, yeah. honey. She's like, <laughs> she's like, just come with us. And I was like, oh, my God. I thought about just sleeping so many times. And finally, my boyfriend was like, Are you... no. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's Beyonce. <laughs> it's I don't Beyonce. listen to any pop music. I'm not cool, but I know that this is Beyonce. Yeah. Right, right. It's just one of those things <laughs> yeah. you have to say yes. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's totally incredible. Oh, that's awesome. But what a great story. That's probably the best story. Oh, that's, that's cool. really, yeah. really cool. You, can't, you cannot top Queen Right. No. I mean, it just gives, you know, even more credit to who you are, where you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> all you want to do is close your eyes yeah <laughs> and you still push and power yeah. through not yeah. only for yourself but probably for tess ann too yeah, because you're awesome. like she's a great person i need to make this happen for her yeah. and i think that's pretty boss that is so boss because <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I know that i probably would have second thought it like you did oh my god and had yeah. to have somebody talk sense into me <laughs> what are you doing thanks boyfriend yeah right yeah, you know they're awful. good for something yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's right that's right um yeah. What else do we want to ask? Um, so obviously we talked about the perks. We've talked about the the downfall. Um, do you have a favorite contestant that you've worked with? Mm. I know it's been a lot of seasons. <laughs> I have. Let me think. For anyone that just really stands out that you're like, that was a really great person. Well, I'm having a pizza night with Caroline Pennell. Uh, supposed to be next week, but I think she's getting her wisdom teeth. Oh, oh no, that's the that's worst. worst. I think we're gonna do pizza night soon. Um, I keep in touch with a lot of them. Amy Bashel from season nine, um, Senya and Dia from season one. Oh my god, who else? Jermaine winner season mm-hmm. two. He's incredible. I love him. And Javier, I love again, I love all of our winners. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think that Billy Gilman was really special. Um, Allison Porter, really fucking cool. Talk about a boss, like legit absolutely incredible woman she's an incredible mother there was a moment in new york on our press tour where she said somebody had asked her how she balances her career with and her children Mm -hmm. career Mm -hmm. and family and she's like well i have i have to have a career and she's like how else am i going to set the example for my children Mm -hmm. and i was like cut (laughs) like again almost burst into tears exhaustion does that to me but it was also a really powerful moment that was that was really cool so but yeah yeah. lots of good people come through that show so i am i am lucky i am lucky that's really really cool well i know you were really nervous to do this podcast (laughs) because you you pride yourself as a behind the scenes person absolutely but i'm here to tell you that we're finished (laughs) and you did it you made it so congrats and the wine is still half full so you're good a little i am sweating you are so wonderful girl you are a girl boss and of course we're so happy to have you here Mm -hmm. and you had so many great stories and so for the people that want to follow along with maybe some behind the scenes voice photos that you might post where can they find you on the on the web i unfortunately don't post a ton of behind the scenes voice photos but i post a lot of pictures of food and your cat and wine and my cat oh i love and, your cat and adventures um but if you really feel inclined i would welcome you um i'm at the vi peterson on instagram that's my only public platform that's I awesome. That. I love V.I. Cool. Peterson. That's yeah. V.I. Peterson. Really <laughs> clever. That's really clever. Well, thank you so much, Val. Thank you, for ladies. I'm yeah. so inspired by your story. I'm glad you took the leap and came here to yeah. L.A. and everything's kind of worked out for you. And all right, guys, yeah. we'll see you next week. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Boss Please Pod. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe on iTunes. Navigate the path to your best self with us because bossing together is always better. Yeah.